today uh, this talk is about automating up the non conform updating the non conformance and what i mean by uh, non conformant is uh, suppose uh, you want to set uh, or a lot of policies in your environment and you you have uh, some resources which are not complying to it and which are not following the policies um then we can we are calling that non conformance and um so the use case we are going to talk about uh, today is for example you have a lot of clusters or you have a single cluster and you want to know which resource is created by who because your user can create a lot of resources and you will not know uh, uh who has created what and you will be in chaos of resources and for organizations um uh, security and uh, um generally man managing uh, image pool policies or uh, setting up your security context you need policies and instead of um, uh relying on you, your users to set up everything or co be complying to your policies you can just automate everything um using opa uh, which is open policy agent which uh, we are going to talk about today and also the gatekeeper which is the kubernetes uh, policy controller so let's move forward so i am harshita sharma i work in kubernetes i'm a software developer and i've been working in open source since around 2 3 years i have worked in various open source um projects like uh, managing uh, stateful applications uh, storage or uh, um how managing multi cluster stack environments or creating controllers for managing the policies etc so the agenda for today is a brief introduction of open policy agent and so let me ask you guys who knows about uh, what is opa what is open policy agent cool uh, many of you know about it so and who knows about the kubernetes uh, native kubernetes native side of it which is gatekeeper one person so i'll be explaining it a bit more today and then uh, what we are going to talk about is so kkp is kubernetes kubernetes platform which is a kind of a one point solution for managing a lot of clusters across cloud on hybrid or edge environment or your cloud environments and so in uh, i'll give a, give a brief introduction of what is kkp what will focus more about how the we are managing or automating the policy informants and compliance across cluster stack uh, using kkp and then uh, mutation so uh, not just um, creating the policies and it it's now also about how can you update how can you update the resources created uh, or before the resources created so the you can just update the request which goes to the admission controller um yeah so uh, as i was saying uh, we cannot rely on uh, users sometimes uh, to comply with the policy so it's better uh to make if you want to make the policies consistent across your cluster stack you have some automated platforms already there so opa is a policy engine um and what i like or wish what i like about opa or why i am talking about it is because it's open source firstly and second is it's now an incubation project in cncf so it's highly supported and um a lot of contributors from the community side and we don't need to write a uh, code for uh, this because so um when we want to apply some policies and so kubernetes uh, a few years back remove remove the uh, and um, policy validation side from the api server and so people now coders can create the admission controllers write their own code in golang or python whatever but if you don't want to write the code and if you want a simple solution then opa is there for you um there is a uh, rego language which you need to learn a bit uh, to deal with opa but it's quite easy um and if you don't want to uh, learn that too there are also um, kkp automation platforms which you can use um so yeah it's a declarative policy so declaration um is always there when it comes to kubernetes okay so gatekeeper 
So this is the policy controller which is given at this native. And the policies which we create are created as CRD, so it's easily manageable. You can write controllers around it, you can manage it. Um, and it has a rich library, so you don't need to uh, worry about creating your own libraries for policies. Um, so let me uh, define two main uh, terms which, are going, which we are going to use today and which are the CRDs of the gatekeeper. First is constraint, which is the, our actual policy, which is created by the user, and the constraint templates, which is basically uh, defining the spec of how the policies are going to look, which is usually handled by the admin side, ad, admin uh, side of the cluster. And uh, it also has audit functionalities. You can also see the violations which are happening. You can also test it using different modes like dry run if you don't want to enforce it, uh, enforce it directly. So let's move forward. Okay, so constraint template, this is how it looks like a bit. And uh, the thing you see down there, uh, there we are uh, defining, uh, for example, if you want labels on your resources and a label can be maybe the owner name uh, who has created the resource, then you can define this and you can set what happens if the label is missing. So basically, if the label is missing, then you can just show uh, a violation message, which is called you must provide the labels. And we, uh, there you can see open a, uh, API v3 schema where, you are, where we are defining how the label should look like. So basically it's a composite uh, value and we have strings over it. So let's move forward. Uh -huh. So as we now have seen how constraint template look like, this is an actual uh, policy created by the user. And it is saying that whatever namespace are, be, are going to create in our cluster should have a label called owner. Otherwise, depending on the enforcement policy, the resource will not be created if the enforcement policies deny, or if you want to just test it, you can put it to dry run. So let me explain a bit about what are the enforcement actions are. So by default, we have deny. So what, what does it, that mean? that if you have created a resource and you have set up a policy that should have a label owner and uh, and if you create a name, so if we don't have the label, it will just deny your request and the resource will not be created. But if you want to just, if you have a production environment and you want to check uh, how it works or how uh, the policies will affect your environment, you can just set the enforcement action to dry run uh, and you can see the violations in the status spec. Uh, in the status side of the constraint. And uh, warn is a third uh, enforcement action. It is kind of similar to dry run, but it also, it shows uh, immediate fed feedback. For example, if you do cake, kubectl create a namespace demo, then it will immediately show you that, uh, that you don't have the label owner, but it will not uh, deny the request. It will let the resource to be created. So this is how a uh, gatekeeper handles the violations. Uh, let's move forward. Ah, okay. So for example, as we are asking for, uh, as we have set up the policy that the namespace should have a uh, label owner, but uh, we want to exempt some of the uh, namespaces, maybe cube system or um, the namespaces which are handling the control plane pods. So you can do that. Uh, in multiple ways, depends on the scope of it. For example, you want to set up a global space, you can create a gatekeeper config and just list the number, list or name the namespace you want to exempt from it. And uh, suppose you want to do it on the constraint side, then the const in the constraint you can add the exempt namespace and a composite literal and you can list the namespaces you want to exempt from the policy. Third option is uh, adding, um, the exam namespace flag and the and the admission gatekeeper flag in the namespace. But how is it different? The second option is it will, the gatekeeper con webhook will not be called at all. So you don't want, uh, so it will just, so for example, the gatekeeper is down. So in this case, the second case, uh, there'll be no problem because it, the webhook is not being called. 
um and you can use asterisk if you want to uh, specify the namespaces for example for cube system you can use cube hyphen uh, asterisk to exempt the cube system namespace now um kkp um kubernetes uh, kubernetes platform which is a automated solution for managing your uh, clusters across cloud and uh, it manages the whole life cycle of it creation management across cloud aws gcp azure what do you want uh, whatever you want and uh, you can handle it or manage it using the ui the kkp ui and uh, so today uh, we we i am going to explain a bit about how we are have created solution to manage the policies across the cluster stack in kkp um so this is a bit about uh, kkp we uh, we can automate operations across in the cloud native area we can manage a lot of clusters we separate the control plane side from the actual uh, user cluster management so that the user is only need to worry about uh, deploying the applications and um no don't need to worry about how the cluster is managed how the control planes are managed how the replication is working so everything is handled by kkp um i'll so this is the architecture but let me just make it simple for you people so on the first uh, level it's it's called a master cluster and it has all the control level components of the uh, the resources you are going to create and the kkp uh, control components and then you have a seed cluster which actually holds the control plane components of the user cluster so for example you create a user cluster and this so there a uh, namespace will be created in a seed cluster which will have your api server your control manager and everything so uh, we separate the control plane components from the actual user cluster so that kkp can take care of all the control components and the user just need to take care about, take care about their applications and what is mentioned here is suppose um, so what this solution helps is in suppose you have 100 clusters so and you want to uh, set up a single policy across all of them what you are going to do are you going to go to each and every cluster and create the policies and set up the gatekeeper um, that's a pretty uh, a uh, hectic solution so what this does is uh, on the upper level which is master cluster you can just create uh, the admin can create the template and uh, a constant and what will happen is it will be synced to the seed cluster and then to all the user clusters depending on if you want uh, to filter the user clusters based on maybe the provider so you only want the policy to be um, synced to aws provided clusters then you can do that using the filter or maybe you want to filter using the label so um um you can sync uh, so this the controller will sync all the constraints uh, depending on your filters to all the user clusters so you don't need to worry about going to each and every cluster and creating your policies and uh, let's move forward okay so this are uh, this is the basic design of the solution uh, templates are created and handled by the admin so that um uh, admin can define what uh, policies we are going to set for the organization and then uh, kkp creates a wrapper around it the seed uh, constraint template and constraint um, in the master and seed environment so that it can easily sync and handle it but on the user cluster side it's it's same as uh, how it how the gatekeeper crd looks like for constraint template um okay and uh, the second thing which is important to discuss today is default constraints what does this mean is um, the admin uh, want to set up a single security policy maybe uh, for example setting the security context privilege to false in all the clusters um, so it uh, the the admin can create a policy in master cluster using the ui or the cli and it will be synced to all the opa enabled user clusters based on the filters so if you as uh, if you want to uh, filter based on the provider or the label you can filter it but the policy will be the default constraint policy will be enforced um, on all the user clusters and uh, so let's move forward 
हाँ सो लेट मी शो यू अ बिट ऑफ द यू आई के पी वाई सो यू हैव एन आइडिया ऑफ वॉट इट लुक्स लाइक सो हेर इज वेट लेट सी सो एज आई टोल्ड यू एडमिन हैंडल्स कंस्टेंट टेम्पलेट्स एंड द कॉन्स्टेंट्स सो यू कैन सी आई हैव ऑलरेडी क्रिएटेड अ कंस्टेंट टेम्पलेट विच इज कॉल्ड केट एस रिक्वायर्ड लेबल्स विच मीन्स वी आर दिस इज अबाउट um the organization wants a set of labels to be created or to be set in the resources created so the template is already there and i have created a default constant too so as you can see the name is required labels but the match which means it will be enforced on the namespace so the object we want to apply the policy to is namespace and this is something which is uh, kkp uh, level a uh, feature which is if you want to apply uh, the policies only to aws provider clusters and uh, if you and the clusters which have label uh, which is filtered through then the policy will only be synced to the other clusters which have these which uh, satisfy this criteria and you can see here that we can on and off the uh, constraint which means if you off or you switch it should switch it off it will be removed from the user clusters and uh, so for example you are testing uh, uh, something in your production environment or you want to uh, temporarily don't want the policies to be enforced you can switch it off and uh, the policies will be removed the constraints will be removed from the user clusters and if you want to uh, set it up again you can just switch it on so through the ui or the cli and then it will be synced again to the user clusters um yeah so you can add more uh, if you are an admin you can add more default constraints you can add more constraint templates um so all this is handled by the admin now let's go to the user clusters i have created a cluster already and if as i as we discuss as i mentioned that it, it will only be synced the policy will only be synced to the provider aws and which has the labeled uh, filtered true so let's see um if we have the constraint here so you can see it will it is synced to this user cluster and if you have three clusters with the same label and the provider it will be synced to all the three clusters and you can see that oh it already has some violations let's see what it is so as i have not exempted any namespace uh it will show that um already created namespace uh, these have don't have the label owner so all and then you can see the enforcement action is denied uh, which means if i create a new namespace which don't have the label on it it will not be created uh, and you can see uh, this label here which means it this constraint is created by the admin and you as a user cannot uh, delete it or edit it but if uh, you want uh, you are a user of this cluster you have access to this cluster you want to create a constraint only for this cluster you can edit here and it will be only applied to this cluster so we you can create a constraint or set up a policy on the um cluster stack or on the cluster level whatever you wish for and you can filter your clusters using a label and provider um okay let's see if we can go to the cluster now and see what are this okay so this is the cluster i've already created and let me check all right so let's see we have, if we have the constraint template here okay so we can see uh, there is a constraint here and let us try to create a new new name space um maybe demo so you can see the request is denied because the enforcement action was set as deny and it's uh, saying that uh, as mentioned in the constraint template that the message if there is a missing label the message will be you must provide the labels owner um let's do one thing now let's try to edit this and see if 
we can play with this. Uh, so we, I'm going to edit the constraint here. You can see the total violations. You can see all these violations in the status. You can also see it in the KKP UI, wherever you wish. Uh, for and you can see the label owner value and let's see where is our enforcement action so it is set as deny mm -hmm. so let's do one thing enforcement Action set as try. Uh, mm. All right, enforcement action set as try run now. Let's see if it works. Cool. Let's now try to create another namespace. Maybe test. So you can see because we have changed the enforcement action, it is now created, though it doesn't have the label because this is just for the use cases where you don't want to actually, um, re you want the admission webhook to reject your request. You just want to check if it's working or not. And you, if you want to check uh, the violations, you can again go to the constraint and you can see that there must be a, yeah. So you can see that the violation is here, but will the request will not be denied. And you can, if you want, uh, if you are done with your testing, then you can again ch change this to deny and it will be uh, applied again. Let's move on. All right. Okay. All right, so uh, why this is useful is uh, for a number of clusters, if, um, it will uh, save you from the hassle of setting up your gatekeeper and setting up the policies and managing everything. Uh, you can simply go to the UI, create your clusters, your admin can set up the constraint templates, maybe create some uh, constraints that the admin want to, to be synced to all of the clusters based on the filter filters. And then you can just uh, manage everything through the UI or the CLI and it will be applied. Um, okay, so let's move on to mutation. So till now the gatekeeper was, uh, till a few uh, years back, it was just uh, allowing you to set up the policies and uh, uh, denying the request if you don't want it. But now you can modify the resources too. And uh, let's, see how it does it. Uh, there are three CRDs mainly. First is assigned metadata, which is uh, when you want uh, the mutation or the changes to behave, happen on the resources on the met metadata side, uh, side. But the thing to notice or note here is metadata is not something you can change, uh, should change uh, without uh, being careful about it. So the only changes you can apply um, uh, through the mutation configure configurable mutation is on the labels and the annotations and you can add it but you cannot remove it um, so and for the spec side we have another crd uh, which is and all these crds are called mutators and for the assign uh, crd we can um, um, if you want to maybe um, modify the resource for the security context or the image pool policy, you can do it through the assigned CRD. And the modify C set, which is the third one. It, this can be used if you want to add or remove argument from the uh, container, then this is uh, the CRD which you can use. Um, so we have three. First is for metadata, only for metadata. Second is for spec side. And third is for adding, removing, or uh, dealing with the argument list or from a uh, spec side list of your containers. And so there are three different sections uh, in mostly common in all these CRDs, which is first, where you want or which resources you want to change. Uh, second one, one is the path. So for example, uh, you want to modify the label. So the part, path would be metadata.labels. And the third is conditions, um, which is actually um, 
what value do you want to uh, change so you can you can specify the location plus the value for example you want owner label value to be admin so you can set it in the third part and uh, there is a match section so for example you want to filter uh, uh, changes to be uh, applied on based on namespaces or label selector or labels so for example you want the changes only to be uh, or the resources only to be modified in a particular namespace you can uh, add the namespace in the match section and just add uh, the value of the namespace and uh, uh, the modifying of the resources will only be only ha will happen on in the resources inside the namespace and for example you want to exclude some namespace for example you don't want uh, uh, the webhook to modify resources in your uh, cube system namespace then you can exclude the namespaces and using this uh, excluded namespace and if you want uh, to use a label selector uh, then you can this uh, you can use this and if you want to specify the scope of it for example you want uh, resources to be handled only in the namespace side then you can specify it here um okay so as i mentioned the location and the value so uh, the location is specified the path for example parameters dot assign dot well uh, sorry for example metadata dot labels and then uh, it, um, to assign the value you have parameters dot assign dot value where you can set uh, the values of um, your label or uh, whatever changes you want in the resource so uh, this will explain a bit more what i <clears throat> was explaining about location and parameters so as we were all, already handling with the policies which want uh, a particular label in the uh, on the resource so this is we can this is what we can create and as you can see it deals with the label uh, or sorry annotation side of it so we are not uh, uh, messing with the name or namespace or we, we either we cannot uh, um, uh, change the name or namespace of uh, our, of our resource using this metadata so we can only deal with annotations and labels as you can see uh, here we can specify what resource you want to be modified so here it is pod which is namespace and the location so which well uh, where you want to make the changes so this is um, a notation and the notation name is owner so you want the owner annotation of a pod uh, which is namespace to be set a value which is admin then you can create this crd and as i mentioned already pre existing labels and annotations cannot be modified because of we want to be or gatekeeper want it to be secure and not uh, modifying a resource should not cause any chaos in the cluster so there are some restrictions when it comes to this for example you cannot you cannot uh, modify already uh, added labels and annotations we can but, but you can add a new ones and let's see how assign works so uh, this is uh, pretty useful because if you want all your pods to have a immutable policy always then you can use this um and uh, as i mentioned you can exclude some namespaces so here it is a uh, system uh, you can you uh, you can uh, mention a lot of uh, you can mention a, because it's a composite value you can mention a number of namespaces you want to exempt this uh, mutation from and the second one is uh, security context if you want your pod to have a security context value privilege to false this is important when you wants to secure your pods and you don't want your pods to have a lot of access so you can just create uh, the crds and uh, the resources created will all, will be modified uh, during the time of creation and this is very uh, important and it is very useful when you want to set pod affinity and anti affinity rules you can actually uh, dynamically Uh, take the value of your labels or annotations from the metadata so for example you have set a uh, you have a number of nodes and you have uh, you want to have a specific number of replication of your etcd pod 
and uh, so you can use uh, this CRD and you can use the label of the, those pod as the deployment name. So what will happen is no two pods with the same label, uh, which which are uh, the no two pods of the same deployable will be created in the same uh, node. So you can use this for uh, pod NT affinity or pod affinity uh, uh, use cases. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, any questions?